Earl Hollum is with us tonight. He has had, he's done a lot of things in his career, both uh, motion pictures and television, and is having tremendous success now as Sergeant Bill Crowley of NBC's dramatic Police Woman series. Would you welcome Earl Holloman? You're going into what, third year, fourth year? Third, oh, we're going into the fourth. Gee, that's sensational. That's right, if, unless NBC decides to pull us. No, I don't think so. Why would they? Who, who can tell? Why do they do a lot of the things they do at NBC? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you heard the lineup of some of the new shows coming up. No, I... Oh, oh I, you I'm missed sorry, that, I was, huh? No, I was in the... Yes, I missed that. You were in the... Can we do that right. again, Johnny? No, no. <laughs> you know, have you ever written that somebody... Uh, you probably did when you researched this role. Did you ever go out riding with a... Uh, I did it in New York once. Somebody asked me, some reporter said, would you like to ride on like the night watch and just ride around in a police car when they answer the calls. It is fascinating. You really get a indeed. tremendous what, insight. Did you how long did you spend with them? Something like two hours one night, mm. you know, and family disturbances and drunks and brawls and uh, a lot of crazy things. As a matter things. of fact, um, years ago I did a series called uh, White Country about the rodeo. And I didn't know anything about the rodeo, so I went out and I got to know the rodeo guys. I spent time in the shoots. I went from rodeo to rodeo. And you get to know them well, sitting in the bars, you get drunk together, and that's where you really get to know them. It's and hard, uh, that's where you get to know the bunch, cops, too, it? incidentally. Yeah. You, uh... Do cops have hangouts like they do? You see on the oh, shows sure where they, they, they patronize? Oh, absolutely. Some terrific places here in town. Uh, also, the Academy. I used to go up there a lot right. before we started the show. A lot of undercover cops go up there. Uh, but the other night, about two weeks ago, I spent six hours from 12 midnight to 6 in the morning in the back of a black and white. And we cruised all over Hollywood. And I tell you, it's fascinating. I, I made every call they made, went every place they went, went into each home, whatever. First call we got was a homicide in progress. Code three, which means you, you proceed with lights and sirens right. flashing. Fortunately, that was a false alarm. But uh, then when the next thing we had was a man down, which means that somewhere there's a man down, lying down. Yeah. And uh, we pulled up to this old apartment building in, the, in this dark, corridor there was a man there we walked in nobody was there just this man unconscious you know young man bloody and uh turns out he was really just drunk and somebody had taken a poke at him but uh i was amazed and, and really impressed at the way that the police handle all these calls i mean they go from one uh disturbance of the peace or party in progress or family disputes it's cops have told me several officers i know that one thing they really hate to answer are family quarrels between a man and his wife, because they say they can't win. Very often they show up, and either partner tries to use to get the cop to their side, so they're caught in the middle. And very often they turn on the they turn on <clears throat> the cop. They say that those are some of the most dangerous calls because right. you don't expect anything to happen, and yet often that's where somebody gets hurt. Right. Um, we we had one. We stopped. Incidentally, every place they went, they introduced me as Sergeant Crowley, and I was dressed in uh, just in you know clothes right. like this. Uh, most of the time, they didn't get it. Most of the time, it was like in a dark corridor or something. They didn't get it. We went into this one place. There was this lady downstairs, and she uh, met us, and her husband had taken a poke at her. And she wanted him thrown out of there right away. Now, and what the, can they legally do? Can they? They can't do anything. Right. Uh, the policeman said, well, are you married to him, ma'am? And she said, yes. You know, unfortunately, she'd been married to him for about six months. And uh, the, the apartment was in his name as well as hers. And he says, I can't throw him out of there. It's his place. Right. You know, she says, you mean he's got to kill me first? But she's, well, he says, more or less. You know. <laughs> They're really it's, trapped, aren't they? Yeah, it's difficult. They, they, they all night long, they answer these kind of calls. You know, we think of them in terms of just giving us tickets. But they're out there solving these problems and being yeah. arbitrators all night long. They kept introducing you as just Sergeant Crowley. Does Sergeant anybody Crowley. get wise after a while? Well, uh, this particular place, we went upstairs, and he said, incidentally, does he, uh, what's his name? His name is Roger. He says, well, does Roger have a weapon or anything? She said, well, he has a knife in the bedroom. So uh, we went in. Roger was charming, you know. Uh, he was watching television. I think your show. Uh, <laughs> Pays to be armed when you watch this show. <laughs> <laughs> So they talked to him, and I noticed that the, the police use their names. Every time you talk to uh, a, a, a criminal or whatever, you, know, you, you use their name constantly. Constantly repeat the name because it disarms them, throws them off. Oh, and uh, after a while, he sat down and, uh, oh, yes, he admitted that he had poked her. He'd taken a, sh uh, taken a shot at her. He'd hit, hit her, slapped her. And uh, my friend <coughs> said, well, why did you hit her, Roger? He says, well, she pulled a knife on me. So uh, anyway, he sat down. 
she's berating the cops because they can't do anything. In the meantime, he keeps looking at me out of the corner of his eye. And by now I knew he knew, you know. And he's got this little twinkle in his eye. And he comes over to me and he says, I sure do like your show. <laughs> that was it. I said, thank you very much. You know, I didn't want to make a big thing. He said, uh, man, I'm so embarrassed we had to meet under these circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> I'm apologizing to you for Belton. Yeah. That's funny. Those are yeah. tough calls, but that's an exciting night. Oh, to it was, do that one. I wouldn't really, know. It's terrific. You really get an insight into that other side of the life that most people are completely unaware of. I can't. It's, I, you, you develop tremendous respect for some of these guys. You really do. I have to interrupt here for a second. We shall be right back. Here's a word from one of our sponsors, then we'll be back. Thank you, Doc. We're back. We're talking with Bill Holland, with Charles Nelson Riley, with Christy, Donna Theodore. You ever been, uh, you ever been stopped by the police since you've been in Los Angeles? And doing that show, I would guess it would have to be somewhat of an advantage. It is. As a matter of fact, I was once stopped down in San Diego, and uh, the guy was... What were you, what'd you do? I made, I made a left-hand turn from the wrong lane. Uh, I was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the guy stopped me. I just happened to be in the wrong lane, suddenly realized I should have been in a different lane, and I turned. You saw the little lights coming? But the guy stopped me, yes. I saw the lights, and he stopped me, and he said, uh, recognize me immediately. And was a big fan. It like, wow. seemed like See. all shows. And we stood there and we talked, and I, you never saw a guy be so nice to a policeman in your life as I was. And I told him, oh, I told him how we made movies and how we did stunts and how we did, you know, we sat there. I gave him a history, a rundown of the motion picture business. And by God, when we got through, he gave me a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> but recently, I got stopped for the exact same thing, like a sheep, you know, the, the lady in front of me turned left and so naturally I turned left following her and cut right into oncoming traffic and there was a motorcycle I knew I did wrong the minute I did I knew I was wrong knew knew <laughs> suddenly the red light went on and I thought well you know I'm wrong you know admit I'm wrong so I said to the guy listen you got me dead to rights is you that know, the I'm best thing to do would you advise is to admit if you're wrong say right absolutely. away absolutely officer I was wrong I absolutely I, I swear I talk to these guys all the time it's the best if you're wrong you know admit it you know sometimes you might not even get a ticket um, I said, I'm wrong. You know, I know I realized what I did the minute I did it. He said, uh, may I see your driver's license? And I gave him the driver's license. He said, is this your current address, Mr. Holloman? I said, yes. He said, uh, well, you know, and he chastised me a bit. He said, I'm not going to give you a ticket. He says, because to be blunt, I like you. <laughs> and he says, not only that, but he said, one night over the academy, you gave my wife a piece of chicken. <laughs> So, yeah, it pays. Oh, I go man. up to the Academy a lot now. I buy I go up and stand there. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say it's best to always admit I've, I've tried things occasionally when I've been stopped, like, uh, gee, I'm sorry, it must have been a touch of malaria I picked up in the steaming... <laughs> that I picked up in the steaming jungles of New Guinea during World War II. <laughs> and he writes the ticket while I'm talking. And yes. You're going to go down to... You, uh, you appear occasionally in front of police groups, don't you? Yeah. Uh, you're gonna, yes, I think I you mentioned uh, before the show you're going down to Houston. I'm going to Houston. I'll be in Houston this coming for all the folks in Houston. I'll be in Houston the coming Tuesday and Wednesday. And uh, Wednesday night there's a, a benefit uh, for the widows and orphans of uh, slain policemen. But, uh, it's sponsored by NBC. Right. It's a very nice function. The, I think the 100 Club, it's called, it's right. around the country. So I'll see the folks in Houston this and Tuesday and Wednesday. You mentioned Code 3 a moment ago. Do you, you know all the police parlance now? Do you hear it on the, uh, yeah. On the radio? Yeah, more or less. It's, uh, code 1 is... Uh, is acknowledge code one? You know they're giving you a message. What's a 714? I hear that occasionally. Is that what's a drunken? Uh... Oh, that's a deuce. That's 502. That's a 502. Yeah. Did you ever get stopped for? No, 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 <laughs> no, no, I... no. Never have. Oh, I have <clears throat> once. When you were a little. Uh... No, well, no, I wasn't even a little. I uh, I went to the grocery store and uh, pick up. It was a hot night, and I picked up a six pack of beer on my way home, which is six blocks away. And I'm talking to a friend, and we and I just opened up a beer and started sipping it. I was so stupid, I didn't realize that was alcohol. Oh, right yeah. in the car. Right in the car, yeah. I'm just sipping on a beer. It was That's a no-no, isn't it? Pulled up to a corner, and there's a, a cop uh, talking to a pedestrian. And I'm standing there watching him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> sipping my beer. That's brilliant. Brilliant, Earl. Brilliant behavior. Oh, the guy, the guy uh, follows me down the street. And I keep them looking at the speedometer. I'm going five miles an hour. I think, why is he, why is he following me? 
<laughs> Here's to your health officer. Good move. Yeah, it could have. I tell you, it could have cost me a lot of dough. But uh, it was stupid. But I, uh, yeah. when I went to court, I had to go to court on that. And I told a judge, I said, it's, you you know, I'm guilty, but I said, I have an explanation. I said, stupidity is my explanation. <laughs> yeah, you can't make a plea like that, yeah. guilty with an explanation. I was fined 10 bucks. However, it's still on your, your uh, record, so, you know, your insurance goes up astronomically. Uh, and it's just as if I were a drunk driver. Yeah. Are you coverable at all, Ed? I mean, yes, I, <laughs> I just want to know if you true. That's one thing you should never do when you're drinking is get into a car. Oh, absolutely. God. All right, we'll take a break here. And uh, we know that. Bill Crystal is with yes. us, and Charles Nelson and Riley, all three of them. <laughs> and we'll be right back after this.